So what do you guys think? <laughs> no spoilers, but I have to say I've seen the next three episodes and they totally deliver. It's so good. So anyway, <laughs> more to come. Anyway, I'm Deborah Birnbaum. I'm Variety's executive editor of TV, and I couldn't be more thrilled to be moderating this panel. So let's bring everyone up. We're going to start with the co-creator and executive producer, Sarah Treem. She plays Helen Mora Tierney. <laughs> and executive producer Jessica Rhodes. Yay. I don't know where to put my feet. This so, is a little bit we do. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody have water. We're going to have to share mics, but we'll get through this. Okay. I just want to say, first of all, it's lovely to be on a stage with all women. Just got to give them, you know, all due respect to the guys, but this is a good thing. All right, so what's the issue with L.A.? What do you got? What? <laughs> How are you feeling about L.A. these days? Who, who are you asking? I'm going to start with Sarah, because it feels like you're working out some L.A. <laughs> issues here. <laughs> yeah, I totally am. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, no, I also, I, I also like Helen's character. Find the Pacific Ocean like completely ostentatious <laughs> um, and ridiculous. And also, just it's so like the Atlantic Ocean. I feel like is such like a subtle and an elegant ocean, you know. And it's very changeable. And sometimes the sky and the ocean are the same color, and that's beautiful. And then sometimes they're completely different colors. It's a, day by day, it changes. And the Pacific is always just blue, <laughs> and you can't really do anything except look at it. Yeah. But I don't know. More is bi coastal, so she, she may have a perspective. If you have a wetsuit, you can go in. That's what's dirty, though. Yeah. <laughs> it takes, I agree. I don't disagree. But I like the beach, the expanse of beaches in, uh, on the West Coast are kind of, they're so wide. Yeah, but I feel like even that is like, it's too much. <laughs> it's too much. It's like, why do you need all that beach? You don't. You just need a you little don't, beach. No, it's very excessive. You're right. <laughs> I, I, am, I stand corrected. So I was, <laughs> there was a point I was trying to make in that. So obviously location and setting has yeah, been yeah. A, such an important part of the show for the first couple of seasons. So yeah. why move it out to L.A. for the season? Yeah, a couple of reasons. I mean, um, I think we felt that, um, that we needed a change for the show. You know, we had, been, um, we had been up and down that East Coast for three years. And... Uh, and the characters had all been sort of on top of each other for three years. And, and we felt like, you know, people move. And so a lot of times, actually, what, especially if a situation has gotten impossible to navigate or, you know, or you just, you just need a change or something like that, uh, uh, people move. You know, and, and, and they don't do it in television shows because it's hard to move a television show. But uh, they do do it in life. And I felt like... Um, you know, pulling a geographical would not be out of character for somebody like Helen who just like needed a, a fresh start and a break and was trying to distance herself from the life she left behind. And then we were having a lot of fun with that adage, like anywhere you go, there you are, you know, so it comes with her. And I mean, it literally comes with her um, in the form of Noah. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I, I, to, to be totally honest, I didn't know if, uh, if Showtime would go for it because it is really unusual. Um, but I do think, I mean, they've been super awesome. And, uh, and I do think it really gave the show like a sort of a new burst in the fourth season, which was important. And Maura, how did it feel for you to move? Well, I had lived in LA for a long time, like about 15 years. And then I've been living back in New York for five or so. So um, on the one hand, it was nice. I have friends there and colleagues there. Um, I, lo I, I love shooting in, in Montauk, so I, you know what I mean? I did miss that a little bit, even though I was mostly in Brooklyn or Queens or wherever our studios were. But uh, um, I do, this is, I'm about to say that maybe the most boring thing you might hear all weekend. <laughs> Get ready. <laughs> the traffic is a real drag. <laughs> And I live, my place in LA is in Venice, which I love Venice, but it's, it's literally, it I was far. Like we sh and, and the studio was in Culver City, and I was like, awesome, it's a seven minute drive from my house. And all of our locations are like in the Hollywood Hills or in Simi Valley, very far away. <laughs> so that, that, I just, I got used to being able to take the subway home from work if I wanted to. But I mean, I think it, it served the show well. And I think the visual, uh, the opposition of, of what the coast looked like will, I think, make the show interesting, too. I mean, right. I think it and served the show very well. And it's I not, not like everyone's driving. here. Just, just you guys are yeah. on the West Coast and, and, right. and 
Cole and Allison are still East Coast. They still stay there. So this show has the duality of that. But where is Allison? <laughs> Definitely cannot answer that in this panel. <laughs> that, wouldn't, that would count as a spoiler. And then Jessica, talk about why you wanted to join the show this season. Well, I've been a huge fan of the show, like watching it from season one. And I thought that when, when Sarah and um, others reached out to say, do you want to join the show? I was so excited because I don't think there's ever been a show that dives into, it's, it's not just point of view, but that perspective is reality. Mm -hmm. That concept was always so interesting to me, that idea that like, I think it changed a little bit the way I view life, like in every conversation I have with people, because you kind of stop having a conversation about truth and trying to prove a point and just kind of hopefully listen to the other side because it, it's not your perspective that matters. And anyway, so I was really excited to be a part of it. What does that, for Sarah, what does that format of shifting perspective allow you to do from a storytelling perspective? It's really come to define the show. Yeah, it really has. Um, <laughs> I don't know how to answer that question. We've just been doing for so long that I'm, now I'm like, what would it be like not to have that as a, as a system? Um, uh, I guess, I mean, just, it allows us to dive really deep into character psychologies, you know, deeper than, uh, than I even anticipated when we started, um, because everything you see in, in a character's perspective is from their perspective, so it's filtered through their perspective, and sometimes we, you know, we push it a little further, like I think the earthquake thing, you know, this year was very much like, the woman is anxious, and so we're going to see that, um, and sometimes, you know, it's, it's sort of pulled back, but just that, that that you, ne you, never let, you never let up on it. Um, and we're very um, diligent in the shooting, you know, and it drives the directors a little crazy sometimes, but like a character, a scene can't start before the character enters it. Uh, obviously it can't continue after a character has left it. We're really only seeing what the character is seeing in the scene. You know, that doesn't mean that there are other, other things aren't happening in the scene. Obviously when you see the scene from two perspectives, you understand that, but like, I don't know, there's a bit of a rigor to the way that we think about writing it and shooting it that I do think allow, you know, in that way that like if you put a framework around something, you really can, you know, kind of uh, dive deeper within it that allows us to just, and that's the kind of the name of the game in the affair is character, character, character. So it just allows us to go even stronger into that place, yeah. And Laura, from your perspective as an actor, how do you feel about playing those shifting perspectives? What does that allow you to do? Does it allow you to get deeper into Helen? You've yeah. played like five perspectives know, at this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was yeah, yeah. Say, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, oh, I've always loved it, and it's always fun, and it's what initially drew me to the material, and it's been so, I don't, amazing. It's been an amazing journey. To I mean, it's so much fun. Um, and then this season, there's an, another one, which will be five, mm -hmm. and... I don't know what we're allowed, whose it is, but so, but so. I was gonna say, are we allowed to say whose it is? I don't know. But anyway, there's a fifth one, and no, Sarah and I were like, okay, someone what? we've met on the show already. Yes, and we're like, what? Okay, what are we, is That's left so to do? Fun, yeah. But we did it. Yeah. Like through also with Caroline, yeah. through costumes, like or Sarah, you had that image, yeah. and then we like t Caroline took from that image and built a costume. It was really like theater, yeah. and then I put it on. Yeah, and then awesome. the writing, that, like, yeah. and she became truly a, a different version of anyone we'd seen, and it was so much fun. Yeah, yeah. and it's, I mean, I'm gonna just like sing Maura's praises here for a second, but you, but I feel like with an actress like Maura, the she has this ability to just shift and shift and shift, and yet keep it a consistent. Obviously, it's coming from a consistent place, um, and so you can see the. Um, core of the character every time, but the layers change, and it is just fun, and it, it does, and we do sort of feed off, like the writing and the acting and the costumes and the sets, like they all sort of feed off of each other, and we keep, you know, and and now we've gotten, I feel like in the beginning we were struggling a little bit more with it, but now we've gotten pretty good at it. And yeah, we can kind and I was of gonna say, yeah. that happened really fast. Yeah. Like we're sitting in the wardrobe, and then just ideas start coming out, and then it happened, and it was really, it was very fulfilling. Yeah, and yeah. It, it makes you really challenge, you know, because we did feel like we had done as like, like we, where we've done, else to right, go? Where else are we going to yeah. go with that character? And then we were approaching it from this new character's perspective, and and uh, initially, I mean, this and this happens with Maura and I a lot because she's so smart. Is like she'll see the writing on the page and be like, uh, like I feel like we <laughs> feel like we could do better, you know, and she's right. <laughs> we have um, discussions. Yeah, right. Yeah, she's like. I don't, re but she was, but in this, but it did, it did take that, right? So we kind of, we had the concept, like, to see this, 
this to see the Helen character from this new character's perspective. And then we basically did a, a draft, you know, and was like, nah, maybe it's this, you know. And then it was like, that's that's not it. Let's try it again. And then and then it did. The costumes yeah. did help us. And um, yeah, it was fun. Um, how do you guys work together? I mean, you know, how you know quickly do you count? I'm um, sorry, Helen. Mora, sorry. No. Yes. <laughs> I did that too. I know. I know. I mean, you're, you're just Helen to me. Yeah. That's how, okay. <laughs> How do you guys work together? I mean, do you give her notes on her scripts? Do you go back no, and forth? I mean, I, no. I mean, I, it's Sarah's show. I mean, it's she's being very oh, generous. I give notes sometimes, yeah. but I but I mean, I don't write like I. Let me be totally honest. Like yeah. with Maura, the problem with Maura is like she does give notes sometimes. You know, where she's like, I don't I don't know about the scene. Or I'm not sure about this. Uh, and usually I take them, but sometimes I don't. And when I don't take them, I always regret it. <laughs> like when I get to editing, sends and I'm me like, a text saying that it's so fantastic yeah. when she says I was right. Yeah. But the truth is, also there's some things that you feel strongly about that, and it's, and it's that's, that's, that's the that's the creative, that's the vision, and so that's I'll do that. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, like my notes tend to be very um, Helen centric in terms of I'm an actor, so that's what I do. And I think that's where I can be unhelpful in the process is Sarah's thinking globally about the show, you know, and I can lose perspective of the, this bigger story that's being told. Right, and the, I mean, we did have one, I think we can talk about this, we had one argument this year where the character did something that Maura was like, I would never do that, you know, and it was hard to, because yeah. she loves the character and she felt like that was a big mistake yes. and it was supposed to be and a Sarah big mistake. Sarah was like, well, you're not Helen. Right, but, and, no, but it, it was, it was a, like a legitimate point. It was a big fuck up for the character and there was a kind of active question like, is, did we go too far? You know, are, are we pushing that character too far at that point? But the, 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 the truth though about working with Maura is like, it's really hard. I'm sorry, you're going to hate me for this, saying this, but it's, it's really hard to push the character too far because she's so damn likable, you know, that like anybody else doing it, you're like, oh God. But when she does it, you're like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, I kind of get it. <laughs> you know, like she totally sells it somehow. Uh, she thought so. it was a deer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> at the end of the day, she did kill someone. So we're how? awfully sympathetic to her. No, no, but, but, that but sir, no, it's the writing. No, it's it totally the writing. I think it is because it was about their love. Like it was about them together in the car. It was about that moment. Mm -hmm. That's what salvages her as him. It's about, a, I think it's about the writing as much as it, I mean, I love all the actors, but it's, who said it? David Chase, who said, who decided, when did it become your character? <laughs> do you know what I'm, And I do respect that. And I think in that instance, it's true. I'm not Helen. And that it just, you know, just, I just had strong personal feelings about this. But the truth at the end of the day, I can't just make her perfect because I want her to be. Boring. Yeah, and just, you know, not real. Jessica, how does the experience of working on this show compare to the creative experience you have on other shows you've worked on? That's a good question. Um, well, I think this show has such singular vision. And while all shows hopefully, you know, have that. I think there's all, usually a lot of producers and directors and actors, there's studio, there's usually a lot of layers involved and it's interesting to me that just as the new member of the team that there aren't that many layers here. Um, that, that Showtime, you know, David Nevitz is on, Notes Call was there. I mean, it is, they, there's an insane personal commitment to this show from the network. There isn't, um, aside from production, a studio level layer, and there are no other, you know, producers and, and, and until this year. And so I think that that's like really an interesting singular vision that here we are season four and it's Sarah's show. We're still like a startup though. Yeah. It's like you, you walk into our offices and they sort of look like a dorm room, you know? And then like you walk into like some other offices on the Sony lot and you're like, damn man, <laughs> you, you would never believe the show is going on four years. <laughs> it's, it's just, yeah, we're, we're, we just like to keep it super low key. You should oh, see the Ray nicer. Donovan yeah, offices. No, we, they're, they're unbelievable. Really nice. They've like been professionally um, designed. But in there, <laughs> yeah, in there, in there, they have been in the same offices for four or five seasons. So have we? Oh no, we no. haven't been at these offices, no, right? You're right. These, well, You're right. The, yeah, they're nicer. <laughs> right. I just, I just want somebody to walk into our offices and be like, 
this is a this is a I legitimate think need a frame for the affair poster. I th- they are that's a I good just start. Think that's yeah. like, that to me yeah. is the most just tacked up against the it wall. Is it yeah, is yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yes. And that's we basically have like kind of a dividers and like boxes the everywhere. Over and my face. <laughs> yeah. I just want an actor to like walk in and be like, yes, I want to be on this show as opposed to like, uh. <laughs> well, you know what you can always do. There's always a hotel room, Sarah, if you want to go that route. Ooh, not Ooh. too soon. <laughs> You, know, you, you can't even respond. Kind of you just have to make. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Forget that stuff. We're back. We're back. We're back. <laughs> what themes did you want to explore this season that you haven't gotten to do before? That's a good grown-up question. <laughs> um, I, I think this season, we, I, I really was interested. So, so I was really interested in this concept of of moving on this season, you know, and 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 how much of that is possible um, and how much of it is just impossible. You know, like why do some people seem to move on from relationships? Why do some people never seem to be able to move on from relationships? And we had this interesting conversation at the beginning of the year, which I thought was so uh, significant, which I I was pitching the the show to, um, to Maura, and I, f- I feel like I can say this because I've said it before, but, um, but I had said that uh, I felt like this was the season where uh, Helen is going to forgive herself. I think that's what I said. Um, and we did the whole season, uh, and we got to the end, and they, there's there's just this amazing Helen Noah scene at the end, and, and she did, and then she came back, and she was like, you know, I think this is actually the season where Helen forgives Noah, um, which was more, which was better, actually. It was more kind of, I think you yeah. were right. That's I mean, how I, we, I didn't know, what, I mean... Well, I just remember you introduced the concept of radical forgiveness, which is like practically impossible. Right. And like for Helen to actually maybe achieve some measure of radical forgiveness. But I sort of thought it was more about, I don't know what I can say, but it, it herself no. and, <laughs> and... Don't look at her, look at me. <laughs> oh, come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. But, but it's, but yeah, yeah well, oh, well, for, yeah. she has trouble. She She's got some prob- troubles yeah. this season, but um, <laughs> <laughs> but yes, <laughs> it was. It's right. about or or the other direction. It was intended to be about forgiving a man, but then also it's about forgiving herself as well. Which, uh, however, it came, I don't re- right. recall. Right. I guess we were sort of working with this idea, like, you know, that theoretically there's there would be no moving on unless there had were some peace that was made right. with the past, right? And a lot has happened, and so uh, the question was. What would no, that look like? Yeah, it's and about forgiving him, and he's she's he's not even on her radar necessarily, right? You know, but throughout even, the season, yeah. yeah. But in that that sort of del- that opening this opening um, sh- sequence is very important because like sh- she can't. He's still hovering. Like even the yeah. b- the more she pushes him away, the more he's in the back of her yeah. conscious mind, you know. And so um, so she can't outrun him. And she can't outrun them. Like right. she has to somehow face it and deal with it. It's also the season's a lot about. Oh, I guess maybe we can't say that either. Right. <laughs> I was gonna say mortality. Yeah, you could say that. Yeah, it's about mortality. I mean, um, we're. That's the comedy part. <laughs> Is that? Oh, <laughs> hilarious. Yeah. Yeah, and I feel like for for I mean for Helen and Noah, like that you know they. But then for also for Allison and Cole, there's a lot of. Um, yeah, I mean, Cole, you know, just he can't let go, and it's getting to this point where it's just ruining his life, and he knows it, and he doesn't know why he can't let go, and so he goes on this whole journey himself to try to figure that out. Um, and Allison is uh, is trying to move on with her own life, and you know, questioning whether or not she's basically she meets a new guy, but it, the question is like, is she getting sucked back into familiar patterns? Can she break patterns? Is it possible to break patterns? You know, like, so I I was talking to my mom actually, and she was saying that. Um, she was saying that she felt like the se- season was a lot like the first season, like it, in, just in the f- like the trailers that she'd seen, that it was a return to the first season. And I was like, no, because the first season was about an affair, and this season is about their relationship with themselves. And she was like, don't say that <laughs> to, to, the, to the press. <laughs> She's like, you need media training. That's not going to sell <laughs> no, your, I your show. It's, I, and <laughs> no, it's good. It's very good. Thank you. Um, <laughs> thanks, Mom. <laughs> Thank you. But I think also... To add to that list, Helen has, quote, 
on the surface changed, changed, changed her patterns, moved, changed, but she hasn't also, she hasn't like, also has not. Right, and Helen, I would say, is, our, is one of our m most self-aware characters, yeah. right? And so in, in the way that self-aware people sometimes, because they're so smart and they're so articulate, I'm basically talking about myself, but, <laughs> but like you can hide really well from yourself when you're, when you're, when you're super articulate, you know? And so I think that's, that yeah. there's a little bit of that happening in Helen too. Like she's so witty and able to sort of out-talk everybody else that like it's, it's, it's harder actually in some ways for her to get to the point where she realizes what she actually has to address. Um, I want to give you guys a chance to ask a couple of questions before we completely run out of time. Anyone have any questions down there? Just yell at this point. <laughs> What do you mean? <laughs> Go Why are you here? And watch them. Get out. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> Just in case anyone didn't hear the question, it was about the genesis of the earthquake and what a theme it is for Helen. But the question is, what is the genesis of mm. that, yes? Yeah, but I don't know. Sarah made it, about it. Did it. <laughs> Excellently did it. Well... It, it, it hasn't been a running theme in the show, no. Um, but, uh, but what we were trying to do this year is, is, and this was actually important, is like when we moved the show from the East, it, sort of elemental uh, factors have always been really important in the show. And when we were on the East Coast, the water was a really big theme. Um, water, storms, like the ocean, that was stuff that we, we, we dug into. Um, and that's always been really important, I think, to us as a creative team is to make sure that the place is as much of a character on this show as anything else, because I guess we do really believe that the place influences the behavior of the people in it. Um, so when we moved west, I really wanted to make sure that we weren't abandoning that concept just because we were in California. So then the question for us this year was, what do we, how do we use California, you know, and sort of draw the kind of elemental, uh, the topography of California into the story in the same way that we had done it with Montauk and like the Hudson Valley and the East Coast. So we, the earthquake was part of that. We go to Joshua Tree at one point. We go to Morro Bay. We're really trying to kind of like um, invest in California in the same way that we were invested in. Long Island. And for anyone else who hasn't seen it, Showtime 2 is running the reruns starting from season one for the next week. <laughs> Good plug. <laughs> Go to the front row. Either of you. Um, so I'm like so nervous. I think I'm going to have to do some body scanning after I um, So first of all, I think I speak for everyone. This episode was great. It was one of my favorites from the show. Uh, my question is, what is the process? Like, how do you guys work the different perspectives? Because I, I guess it must be very hard to come up with like different ways that people see the same event. Yeah, I, it's actually, I, it's not it's not as hard as you think it is. It, I think it just requires like a, a mindset, you know, and we're, as, as writers on the show, we're basically in that mindset at this point. But, um, but it, it is a somewhat organic process in terms of how much of the show do we replay from like two perspectives and how much do we just leave alone because we don't always replay it we're not you know it's, it would get a little re reductive if it was every single scene was seen from the other perspective so the question is like how much do you need to see of your sort of pure story and the character's perspective and what is interesting to to go back and forth on and I guess in in this episode you know we felt like uh, when when people get divorced and they're on two different, that's a really, that's, that is a char that is a perspective uh, rich uh, <laughs> situation, you know, um, and especially around the kids and who's trying harder and who's more committed, you know, and, and, and what the relationship is because, and, and whether or not you're using the kids to kind of box somebody out. I mean, it, there was, there was just, there's so much in there. And so that was the. So much perceived slights real and perceived slights You're right. right that's a very fertile ground yeah like helen did not mean to right. leave noah off the list that was not at all intentional and, and she didn't get his call and she didn't think he was there you know and from his perspective she's been an asshole for a long time and she's you know that was very deliberate and from right. her perspective it's like he's a shit like why didn't he get here on time yeah. you know like why can't he put his own name on the goddamn list <laughs> so poor uh poor and poor trevor i <laughs> know both very valid yeah yeah well, unfortunately, we've got to end it there. I'm sorry I talked too long. Thank you guys so much for coming. Thank you. It was a great time. Yeah.